So here's a question. How do you get a PC to talk to sensors and actuators? PCs run heavyweight operating systems uh, and they can't do tight real-time stuff and they don't interface well uh, to these kinds of uh, pieces of hardware anyway. So the solution is simple. You put in a microcontroller uh, and you get uh, that to interface to, to the sensors and actuators and then you get a serial link to talk to the PC. And in 2014, I had a pretty similar uh, requirement for this. I had a stepper motor control project and I wanted to control a stepper motor, um, but also have it talk to a PC where the user interface runs. Uh, none of the existing protocols, unfortunately, like HDLC, Xmodem, Kermit, were good enough to, for the microcontroller to talk to the PC. They're rather too heavyweight for a tiny microcontroller like an Atmel AVR, uh, which is what I was using, or they're too level level control over the serial line. Uh, they require too much uh, information about how the serial protocol works directly. So I created MIN. Now, MIN uh, relies only on uh, a simple serial link. Uh, now, PCs used to talk serial directly um, in the old days, uh, but now uh, they all use USB. Uh, so the normal solution is to have a USB to serial adapter of some kind. Uh, that can often be built into the USB cable. Uh, now this appears on the PC as a virtual serial port, and so the software just sends bytes down the serial line to the microcontroller. Uh, now some modern microcontrollers uh, support USB directly, and uh, they directly appear on the PC uh, as a virtual serial port. So MIN is a layered protocol. At the bottom is the serial layer that's like a pipe uh, for bytes. Uh, and then the frame layer above defines how messages look on the wire. MIN uses a system called byte stuffing uh, that's used to mark out the beginning of a frame and synchronize up both the uh, embedded and the, the host ends. Um, it also has an ID uh, that the application can use to mark out what's in the frame, uh, and it carries a payload of up to 255 bytes. There's also a 32-bit CRC to guard against errors. Uh, now, the frame layer throws away bad frames. Uh, that's not a problem uh, in most applications that are using sensor data uh, because new values will be along shortly uh, that give the current uh, value of the sensor. But for systems where uh, we're passing events or commands, it's much more important that we actually deliver everything. So there is a uh, transport layer on top of the frame layer, uh, and that provides us with reliable messaging. Uh, and what that does is it will acknowledge uh, each frame and it will retransmit the missing ones. Uh, this means that uh, we have a reliable system we can send events and commands and be sure that everything gets through. But uh, because it might be heavy uh, weight for a very small micro, um, which uses extra RAM, it uses more CPU time, and it uses more code, uh, that whole layer is an optional layer. Now there are several implementations of uh, MIN. On the host side, uh, there's a Python implementation and a Rust implementation. Uh, and on the embedded side, there's an embedded C implementation uh, and also a Rust implementation. For the Raspberry Pi Pico, there's a special implementation of MicroPython, uh, and that provides a, a Python API for MIN on the embedded side. And because the Pico implements USB directly, uh, the firmware has added a second virtual serial port for MIN. So the first one is the uh, Python command line, and the second one is dedicated to, to MIN. Okay, so how do we use MIN? Uh, there's just a couple of MIN uh, API calls, uh, one to send a frame and one to check to see if a frame has been received. Uh, the software doesn't use interrupts, so it just uses the receive call, called frequently enough to pick up frames. And if the MIN transport layer is compiled in, uh, it calls the MIN transport layer and drives its state machine. And that's it. Well, not quite. On a PC, the application is rarely just a simple loop. Often different threads are needed uh, to drive different parts, uh, like user interface, or call up a database, uh, or call out to the internet. Uh, so I've produced a MIN monitor. It is a higher level framework uh, for MIN uh, written in Python um, that you can use for building PC applications. So here's our MIN stack. Uh, and then at each end, there is a MIN monitor, uh, which is written in Python. This is on the Raspberry Pi Pico for the embedded side. 
uh, and min simplifies the PC application. It uses a Python thread uh, that's dedicated to handling min, which then uh, sends messages out to the rest of the system in the PC using Python queues. So you can send uh, commands uh, to the embedded end, uh, you can wait for responses, and you can pick up events. And because of the way the min ID is used to distinguish between what things are contained, it's very easy to separate out all the different commands and events uh, and responses. Uh, so it's designed as a framework, uh, and on the uh, PC end, there's a Python API to this framework uh, that allows uh, some high-level functions to be put in. Uh, and the framework is designed to be extended uh, using the Python, Python class system. So you can uh, produce, uh, use this as a base class and then extend the, uh, the Python uh, to higher level uh, functionality that could be called from an application. And on the embedded end, there are Python hooks to allow the commands to be uh, called out to application Python code um, and to uh, poll for and send up uh, events and responses. So let's head over to the lab uh, to see it in action. Here on the bench top is a Raspberry Pi 4 and it's connected via USB to a standard Raspberry Pi Pico running the Canis Labs MicroPython firmware with min baked in. Here's the Raspberry Pi desktop and first thing we should do is connect up to the Raspberry Pi Pico. So we connect to the first of the uh, serial ports and run the REPL. So here we are connected to the Pico and so we'll bring in and create an instance of the min monitor and we just run it. That's very easy. So in the second window, we can uh, show you how the host side uh, is implemented. So we'll go to where the host code is and we run Python. And we bring the monitor in and we create an instance of the monitor framework. That's now connected to the Raspberry Pi Pico. Uh, and we can ask the Pico uh, to identify itself uh, which is part of the standard framework here, and it should return the serial number. And there we go. Um, we also can send a ping command that is uh, echoed back, and by default it sends a, a hello payload, which just comes straight back. Uh, but a side effect of the ping command in the framework is the uh, LED is toggled. So we could write a um, very simple little program. We bring some Python code in, ping the device and sleep for a quarter of a second. And there we go. That flashes. Uh, one of the other commands uh, we can use is to print something. So we can send a command to send this to the console of the Pico. That's not normally something we want to do because the Pico is running standalone without anyone uh, looking at terminal output. Uh, but it's pretty good for testing uh, and demonstration. And there we go. Uh, so we just finish with a simple stop command and we're done.